Hi, everyone. It's Alex Savage from KTVU, Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. All across the country, more and more states are reopening more and more businesses right now. And uh, to talk more about some of the specifics here, we want to bring in Dr. Vanila Singh, clinical professor at Stanford School of Medicine and a former chief medical officer at the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, Dr. Singh, it's always good to have you on here. We want to start here in California. Uh, so the big news today, uh, Governor Newsom announcing that uh, he, he says that nail salons, hair salons, barber shops can all begin to reopen, assuming that individual counties feel that it is safe to do so. Uh, what do you think about this? Is this a good idea to, to have these businesses reopen? So, hey, good afternoon, Alex. It's really actually an uh, important uh, step in terms of reopening our economy here in California. And we know that other states have done this. Texas uh, famously had the uh, hair salon a uh, person who really made the case that their livelihoods were at stake uh, in terms of being shut down for so long. So there are a lot of people who are going to be uh, happy about doing this. And the incentive that I would guess would be that the business owners would really want to provide confidence and reassurance to their customers by instituting those safety guidelines that other businesses are already implementing, including the social distancing, face, face coverings, mm -hmm. face masks, um, uh, cleanliness, disinfection, and hand hygiene. So I think yeah. it is welcome news. And my guess is that so many of them are very motivated to get their customers back. Sure. And, and the customers themselves are very motivated to, you know, yeah. go in and get a haircut and start to feel normal again. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that, you know, part of the reason these particular businesses, right, were, were um, not allowed to reopen until phase three here in California, until sort of the later stages of all this, is because you have that close contact that we've talked about before. And we talk about, you know, trying to keep that six feet of social distance um, in sort of all aspects of our public life. But if you're having somebody cut your hair, th there's no way to keep that distance. And so how, how do you overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's exactly the challenge, which is why it was, uh, in addition to not being considered essential in terms of uh, food industry, banking, and other absolute necessities of day-to-day -day life, the con concern, of course, is that uh, you come in close encounters uh, in a salon or a barber shop or, or in bars and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. so, but I think that it's all the more reason why uh, both the uh, stylist and the customer will have face coverings, will have to ensure that after each customer, they're disinfecting and cleaning the local area, that they are also ensuring that uh, personal items are not transferred from one to the other. I imagine that will apply also to combs and other accessories, mm -hmm. uh, as well as ensuring that they uh, wash their hands uh, and don't touch their face right away. So I think it'll be all the more reason to emphasize it because of the close encounters. All right, well, you know, that, that was the, the, the headline, I think, from today uh, here in California. Yesterday, the big headline was that uh, the governor said that um, he, he set out guidelines for reopening churches and houses of worship. And obviously, we know there's been, you know, a, a contentious and a, a healthy debate happening uh, across the country about, about reopening houses of worship here. And, and the guidelines, the framework here in California is that essentially the state wants to you know, wants churches to reopen, and, and um, but he doesn't want as, as many people inside them at the same time. He wants them to be at 25% uh, capacity and obviously continuing with the other safety precautions that we talk about, the masks and, and, uh, and the distancing and all of that. What, what, is, what, is, a, um, you know, what is a trip to, to church going to look like here moving forward, do you think? Yes, so many people have been really looking forward to this. I can say definitely some of my patients over telemedicine or even in-person procedure visits have uh, expressed uh, that in this time of anxiety and fear and worry that that part of their spiritual life was missing. And I think the support that they get, both the social support and, and, and spiritual support, uh, are necessary in their eyes. So I think a lot of people will welcome this news. But like you said, it's going to be really important that it's going to be uh, approached in the same manner to really decrease the risk of a viral outbreak. And they're going to be doing that by limiting 
how many people go in at one time it's either 25 percent of building capacity or 100 mm -hmm. folks whichever is lower um, there were also making uh, provisions for ensuring that if when possible out outdoor services are held yeah. Uh, if when possible, more meetings are held so that less people are attending each of the meetings uh, to discourage visitors from coming at off meeting hours mm -hmm. so that there's just not a natural uh, flow, but rather people are coming during prepared uh, identified meetings. And then to also ensure that people can have their temperature checked there's, uh, and or symptomatology checked, mm -hmm. that the people who are checking it themselves are also wearing gloves. Uh, so that they decrease their risk. So they really went through uh, the guidance in really great detail to, at the bottom line, ensure that CDC guidelines are followed, that specific concerns to places of worship are also considered, just like right. the um, passing the plate. I was going to say, you know, there's going to be some limitations, though, on some of those, uh, some of those traditions. I mean, we're, you know, in terms of um, you know, taking communion or, you know, the offering plate being passed around, I, there, there's going to have to be less, uh, less of those activities happening, it seems like to me. That's right. Yeah, and it's hard not to see those traditions that we all identify with, but uh, the main purpose, of course, is really to limit transmission of, of um, you know, contact that can come with someone who may be exhibiting symptoms or may even be asymptomatic and shedding. Uh, but the point being that these are extra precautions that we should take in this temporary time to really try to increase the reassurance while we decrease the viral transmission and to just be mindful that if there is a spike or an outbreak that uh, they are addressed so that folks can continue to uh, have the access to their house of worship, uh, their churches and temples so that they feel comfortable coming back. Uh, how, you know, when uh, talking about whether it's churches or we're, we're talking about hair salons or, or whether it's retail stores, there's, you know, there's also, um, you know, talk about in-store shopping. Um, you know, the governor gave the green light for in-store shopping to, to get back up and running here. But I, I'm curious, when we talk about all of these safety uh, protocols that we need to have in place here moving forward, how, how does, um, you know, how do we ensure that all of that is happening? Or are we, in, in a lot of cases, going to be on the honor system? Yes, yeah, so this is such an important question because it really comes down to uh, law enforcement versus our civil liberties and what kind of uh, state or society do we believe in. Um, most of this is an honor system, uh, really based on the fact that all of us are naturally incentivized and motivated to have our own personal health or that of our family and to do what's right. Uh, and then there might be the occasional folks like we saw out in Missouri at Lake Ozark, who, you know, they may be young, may not really quite fully appreciate that the risks are there because of the area they're in. It's in Missouri and, and you know, st some states are hit more than others. Some dense areas are hit more than others. And those kids were out in a pool. Uh, and uh, so the advisory went out that they should self quarantine for 14 right. days. I, w I would expect that no society is gonna ever be perfect. And I think to have a perfectly following society may mean that some of our freedoms are lost. But for the most part, officials are following this. People do have cameras, they're watching it. And I think right. if we we're sort of going to put that together done, in, in a lot, I mean, in a lot of ways, right? That's kind of what's what's going to happen. We're going to we're going to police each other. Individual businesses obviously are going to are going to obviously put their own rules. Uh, you know, companies, corporations are going to put their own rules in place and say, look, this is. You know, these are the safety protocols you have to follow if you want to be inside this business, if you want to come to this workplace. So it's sort of sort of policing each other in, in some sense, right, to make sure that we adhere to these safety measures. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, examples of what you just said are a true of hospitals and, and food uh, stores, grocery stores that have had to implement this right away. Certainly in the hospitals, we had to do it right away and you have to follow that. Uh, so yes, I, I agree with you. I think the businesses are gonna have their own incentive to ensure that they don't end up uh, being the ones that um, have a problem because it's only gonna be counterproductive for them in terms of losing their business. So there's a self incentive in this uh, by whether you're an individual or a business to really ensure 
that uh, we follow along. There might be exceptions, but I believe they will be exceptions and hopefully not the rule. Um, we talk, let's talk about, um, we talk about in-store shopping here in California. Um, that is, is going to be happening here. The, the governor gave the green light for that to, to ramp back up again, but it's up to individual counties. And I'm curious, um, you know, how, how do you think that assessment is going to be made by, by individual counties on when it's, when it's safe to, to allow stores to, to uh, have customers back inside? Yeah, so such a great question. And ultimately, we know nothing is one, uh, one size fits all. But on the other hand, they're likely to be uh, wanting to have the businesses uh, get up and running, one, to keep them in business, and two, ultimately, that plays a role in terms of tax revenues and, and really the community feeling at more normal. Uh, however, it will likely depend, of course, on uh, what counties folks are in, the rural counties or the ones that are less dense will probably have uh, less uh, reason to not reopen. And we know that the Targets, the Walmarts, and other big businesses and uh, retail stores have already been showcasing that they're able to open and stay open. So there is a template that the critical industries have, have showcased. And I think that the retail stores that are able to maintain those guidances uh, we'll, we'll be able to do it, but you know, some of this will also depend on how much those businesses can actually put in terms of resources to ensure they have all the uh, right. items for the mandate. Yeah, that's the other aspect of this that um, that that sometimes gets a little bit glossed over. But I mean, it's it, you know, it's it's easier for the you know, for the targets of the world to 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 spend the money that it takes to 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 put all these safety procedures into place and uh, but it, and you know, and allow fewer people in your store at one time and all that. But but a small mom and pop business, um, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of money involved in, in in trying to make your business safe in the in the coronavirus era right so I true i mean yeah. this has been discussed around the nation about how small businesses have been massively impacted one is the targets were allowed to stay open but a lot of mom and pop stores had to close and then they're going to have a greater financial burden mm -hmm. when they reopen they've already been devastated in so many ways and some of the uh, small business loans uh, were hard to get out or the provisions were really just focused on paying uh, the employees but not the rent and insurance and stuff so small businesses have had it so much tougher all around so I think one they can't open fast enough but uh, I believe they will be able to uh, meet the mandates if they do open the question is do they open or not and do they get the customers uh, to come back in and support them yeah, that is that is the real question. Um, let me ask you fi finally on you know we talk about all the different types of businesses out there. Uh, restaurants are another one of those that uh, that I think it raises a lot of a lot of concern for so many people. Just because we've heard from medical professionals about the real risk of being in that in you know indoor dining room, a confined space, sitting relatively close to a large number of people and, and the potential for, for your exposure. Um, we, we're hearing all these innovative sort of solutions, businesses, you know, uh, restaurants, I should say, shifting, you know, to more outdoor dining, these sorts of things, limiting the number of people in, in a restaurant at any one time. Um, let me ask you, I mean, how, how, how comfortable would you be, uh, you know, going and sitting down at your favorite restaurant right now uh, you know if it was inside the dining room are you are you to that point where you're comfortable doing that or, or do you think that you, you still want to wait I, I would certainly do it i'm dying to go out to eat at a restaurant uh but i can also share that my uh, i have uh, friends who actually went out to napa mm -hmm. and uh, they were at uh, one of the very wonderful restaurants there uh, to really get away uh, and they they were uh, amazed at um, the accommodations that were done they felt very confident uh, there was certainly space between people and they were eager really to provide uh, great service and and they had a fantastic time so it was really actually great to hear that and uh, I'm really hopeful that we'll hear more stories about that kind of experience where they felt confidence uh, and had a superb experience and we're really happy to be out.
yeah, it's just going to be about putting putting the customers in a in a comfortable place, you know, so they see that certain safety procedures are being followed, and and then you know they feel feel more at ease, right? I mean, that's really that's really the key, right, to getting folks um, back out into the world in a safe manner. Absolutely, and the word of mouth, you know, uh, I took note. I'm sure they took so they told so many other people about their positive experience and then so on and so forth. Uh, I think that's how they will gain that confidence. So we, we're, we are reopening and I, you know, obviously there's so many, so many people are, are eager for this to, to continue to ramp up and for more and more businesses to, to, to reopen uh, to the public. Uh, we want to get back to some sort of semblance of normalcy. Um, is there, is there though going to be a price that we pay for, for the, this process of reopening? Are we gonna see cases spike, do you think? I mean, coronavirus cases are still, still rising here in California, for example. Do you think we're gonna see a spike uh, in, in various spots across the country as a result of, of reopening business? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the big thing is that, for the viewers to know, is that one, the virus is still around uh, and the, the key with the lockdown was really to flatten the curve in terms of the burdening of the hospitals. Uh, and so the good news is that that has been avoided and, and that was positive. And as we slowly reopen, I think we are smarter. We certainly know the guidelines as a society uh, much, much more than three months ago, what was social distancing or face coverings or hand hygiene. And so we've learned a lot and I think that adaptation will hopefully continue to serve us. Uh, the businesses have learned a lot and we're also are learning so much more about the virus. So though the virus is in our community and the transmission will occur, hopefully we also are better at ad addressing with a rapid response, a potential outbreak and contain it. And two, I'm very hopeful about the medical therapeutics and the development yeah. of vaccines. Uh, we had just some interesting news yesterday from another yet another company that uh, is based out of Maryland. It's an emerging biotech company called Novavax and their efforts of phase one and two clinical trials to bring their vaccine forth. And that, I think that also helped the market today because these are the kinds of news stories that they're looking for in this very um, high paced vaccine development and high paced medical therapeutic development uh, phase that we're in in the, in the US. Uh, as we as we hopefully await a vaccine, uh, you know, not not necessarily anytime soon, um, but 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 obviously soon in terms of how long it typically takes for vaccines to be to be approved. I mean, something is 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 going to happen. But but in the meantime, of course, we're, we're you know we're 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 trying to figure out what this looks like, reopening the country, reopening the economy slowly. I, I, I'm sort of curious, you know, when and how do we reassess how our reopening plan, uh, it, how well it's working. You know what I mean? Like, it, are, is there a certain point we, we are gonna look back and go, okay, this is, this is working or this isn't working. We need to, you know, we need to shift our strategy as a society. What, how, do we, how do we assess that? Well, it's such a good question. I think we're gonna have to assess it really weekly, uh, certainly daily in terms of getting data and then following trends and patterns, that's gonna be very important. I'm certain our public health officials and our political leaders and, and state, you know, state governors uh, and the federal government, CDC specifically, are looking at this uh, in terms of taking that data that we're getting and there's a lot of incoming data and then being able to uh, analyze that. I think also when we see pictures of say young kids getting together and not doing the social distancing, we can immediately respond by, by issuing advisories or reminders and whatnot. So we can even be preemptive in that manner. But it's really a weekly to monthly uh, review of how things are and where they are, what county, what city, and, and in what environment, the nursing homes, for example, something that has really come up in recent um, weeks is that they, they accounted for so many of our deaths and to understand that so that we take that data and make amends going forward uh, to really prevent uh, a big major source of where coronavirus related deaths were. Uh, finally, as we wrap up here, let, let me let me look ahead to what the what the summer 
uh, might look like in this country. We, we, we got, I guess, a little bit of a preview over the long Memorial Day weekend, and we saw people from coast to coast, uh, you know, they were, they were out and about. They were at the beaches. They were, they were at the lake, uh, you know, in Missouri, as you refer to. Um, you know, people are obviously are itching to, to, to be out and about, to, to get back to normal here. Um, what, what do you think we're, this summer is going to look like? I mean, are, are we going to be allowed to travel to, to places the same way we, we have been in the past, you think? What is that going to look like? You know, flying somewhere, staying in a hotel, is, is that kind of stuff going to be happening on a, on a widespread basis? You know, it's interesting. I, I heard that actually uh, the vast majority of hotels were open uh, and that we do have some flights. Uh, and my sense that I've been getting this Memorial Day weekend is so many people with a combination of cabin fever, uh, no pun intended, but wanting to get out of the house. And, and uh, also this sense that, you know, it's summer and really that we're in our third month of, of, of shelter in lockdown it has really prompted a sense of, of wanting to get out and feeling that holiday spirit with the, with the beautiful weather really across the nation. So I think that's going to occur more and more. I think people are stepping out, feeling the water, and then they'll jump in or not uh, in terms of the reopening. Uh, but just like you said, the reassessment every so often to ensure that we can do that safely. Uh, but it's very clear the, the uh, you know, Americans want to be out and about and uh, and enjoy the particularly great weather and and we're seeing that and uh, my my hope is that we can sustain that and even continue to progress yeah we just can't forget the the lessons that we have learned over the past couple of months right that's the key as you as you talked about can't forget all those you know the hand washing the the mask wearing and all of that it's gotta that's got to be part of part of our way of life now Absolutely. I think that that will allow us to continue to have more and more, uh, you know, freedom and, and being out and about is if we can actually maintain that. So hopefully people see that, that they're not, you know, uh, frivolous about being out and about and uh, remember that. And especially as we open up more of our economy with the retailers and, and the uh, houses of worship, that that'll be a great thing to see that happen more. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're moving right along in terms of the reopening uh, here in California and, and, and across the country. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how it all sort of plays out here. It's going to be, it's not, it's not anything that there's really a roadmap for, um, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it's so fascinating because, you know, we, there wasn't a roadmap for, 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 for locking things down. And now we don't really, you know, we don't really, we're kind of feeling our way along here too as we reopen, trying to figure out what's going to work and what's not. Yeah, you think about like building the plane while you're flying it. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. There's nothing historically to go by. Uh, we're in such a different era of, of so much information and, and potential misinformation. Uh, so it's really important that we watch this, but I think that we're creating a template for the future. We certainly will never look at infectious diseases the same again. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. We'll, uh, we'll leave it right there on that note. Um, Dr. Singh, uh, always good to have you on. Really appreciate your insight. Um, Dr. Vanila Singh, a clinical professor at Stanford School of Medicine here in the Bay Area and the former chief medical officer at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, thanks again for the conversation. I always appreciate it. Uh, I know folks out there do as well. And we have more information up at our website. It's coronavirus now. Dot com. I'm Alex Savage from KTVU Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we will talk to you next time.